service. Your bill. <laughs>Starting off the news this week, a study published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences has argued that not enough research is being done into the potentially catastrophic risks of untempered climate change, including the risk of total extinction. The study outlines current knowledge on such severe impacts, and then discusses why understanding the potentially worst-case scenarios is so important. The study then suggests a way to research such scenarios, focusing on asking questions about mass mortality and other such extreme impacts of climate change if the current impact were not avoided. Whether or not other future studies will work to answer some of these questions, we shall see. And now over to Ben, who's back from space. Thanks, Doug. Also in the news for this week is a major study that has made an extraordinary discovery finding that as bird embryos develop, they actually pass through ancestral dinosaurian conditions. The research explains how they used embryological imaging techniques to look at how the bird pelvis changes over time as they grow in the egg, revealing that early on several ancestral dinosaur features are present for a time. These include a pubis that points forwards, a short ilium, and a pubic boot, all of which eventually changes into the pelvic condition seen in modern birds. They therefore show that the ontogeny of the pelvis parallels the non-avian dinosaur to bird evolutionary transition, and finds that this evolutionary change occurred by a mechanism called terminal addition, in which new states are added onto the end of a developmental sequence, meaning that ancestral states are expressed at earlier stages in that growth sequence. It's a really fascinating paper with many implications for the mechanisms involved in major evolutionary transitions. Also in the news this week is the announcement of a major new fossil locality being found in the UK. Discovered on a farm in Gloucestershire, this site dates to the early Jurassic and has already yielded some exceptionally well-preserved marine fossils including fish, such as a remarkable three-dimensionally preserved head of Pachycormus, fish with their eyeballs preserved, as well as ichthyosaur bones and some very rare insect fossils. A very exciting discovery then, it'll be interesting to see what amazing things come from this new locality. Finally, there's also been a new pterosaur named recently, called Lingyuanopterus camposi, it comes from the early Cretaceous of northeastern China, and has been classified as an istiodactylid, an interesting group of probable scavenging pterosaurs that are known from Europe as well as China. The holotype fossil of this new taxon is very interesting, comprising an almost complete skull with a detached mandible nearby, as well as the first couple of neck vertebrae. There are also several pellets preserved in association, which are thought to be the regurgitated contents of this pterosaur's last meal. Plus, there's a whole fish preserved next to it as well. The study finds that, although istiodactylids generally have similar skulls, there's actually some difference in their dentition, with at least three different kinds being found in this formation, potentially indicating niche partitioning and different feeding methods among these pterosaurs. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next week.